The medical cannabis industry is booming with good reason. The number of patients with prescriptions has quadrupled in just two years. Cannabis is being used to treat a long list of conditions from arthritis to anxiety. Despite its growing use, the science supporting medicinal cannabis just isn't there. The key research that we need is missing in a large number of areas or it's quite poor. The new guidelines say there is some research to show cannabis might alleviate neuropathic or nerve pain, palliative cancer pain, nausea from chemotherapy, symptoms related to multiple sclerosis and spinal cord injury. That's it. Why consider medical cannabis? These guidelines are timely for people at this workshop. Employers are facing growing demands for insurance coverage for prescription cannabis. So it's a workshop. And medical user Jonathan Zaid is making his case. I have a great quality of life and really medical cannabis has allowed me to have that. When he was a teen, Zaid says he had debilitating headaches that kept him home from school. Now he lobbies for greater patient access. He acknowledges the research is weak. With that said, there's over 200,000 Canadians that are using cannabis for medical purposes with the authorization of their physician. They're finding relief from cannabis. Uh, they're finding increased quality of life. We help prescribe cannabis. This family physician also works for a medical cannabis company. He worries the guidelines will lead to doctors dismissing cannabis as a treatment option for other conditions, such as arthritis or seizures, even though their patients may find relief. We can't continue to tell them that what they're telling us is not true. Uh, we can't just, you know, continue to have that paternalistic point, in my opinion. Advocates for medical cannabis agree there is a need for better clinical trials, but cannabis is not a typical pharmaceutical. No one company holds the exclusive right to it, so there's little incentive to pay for the research. Vicodopia, CBC News, Toronto.